Welcome back. Today I am going to be tying a fly known as Bill Geegan. This classic tandem fly was designed by popular tire Carl Sargent for William H. Geegan, also known as Bill. Bill Geegan was a well-known Maine author who spent nearly 30 years covering sports and the outdoors in the Bangor area. He wrote three books about his adventures, Nature I Loved, The Good Trail, and Seed on the Wind. He drew the illustrations for his first book, Cartoon-Like Images, of Wildlife, Nature, and Fly Fishing. Mr. Geegan was even approached by Walt Disney Studios about his drawing talent. But because of the controversial release of Bambi in 1942, which had led many sportsmen and outdoor magazines to protest Disney Studios due to the disrespectful nature in which they felt hunters had been portrayed, Mr. Geegan politely declined and focused his talents on teaching children about nature, wildlife, and woodworking. He was also known for designing some pretty cool postcards. In this photo taken by Danny Maurer of the BDN on March 5, 1959, Bill Geegan can be seen on the far right attending a dinner hosted by the Penobscot Salmon Conservation Association where the state's fish and game writers were the guests of honor. Bill was ahead of his time in promoting catch-and-release fishing practices. Coincidentally, the same year he published Nature I Loved was the same year that catch-and-release was first introduced as a management tool in the United States in the state of Michigan. Bill was born in 1903 and passed away in 1974. I personally read Nature I Loved in my mid-20s, and it was very inspiring to me. It is a book about Bill's life. Growing up, he found himself 25 years old, wondering where to go next. He bought a cabin in the woods, started guiding, using flies that he had tied himself. He enjoyed writing articles as well and started mailing those to several publications. This later became his career. On a side note, though, it is a fairly difficult book to obtain. It's been out of print for many years, which is unfortunate because it's a wonderful book. I hope there's a publishing company out there that will reach out to the Geegan Estate in the future and work something out with them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little bit on Bill Geegan. Now let's get into tying the Bill Geegan. I'm going to start with a size 8 nymph wet hook in the vise and some 210 UTC thread in black. I'm going to wind this on the hook shank. I'll just come in and snip that tag off. Now I'll continue winding down to the barb, come in with a 30 pound test piece of monofilament. I've pre-cut this to about three inches long. So I'm gonna slide it through the hook eye and under the shank, take some turns of thread over the top. The tail, uh, the original recipe calls for black wool I'm just going to use some black Antron. You can use black hackle fibers, whatever you have. Anything black will do. So I just took some spiral wraps down towards the butt again. I'm just going to bind down this Antron yarn. And I'll snip that tail to length later. I'm going to come in with some silver tinsel. Got two sided tinsel, so I'm going to tie this in silver side down. And now I'm just going to take some really tight turns towards the hook eye. Now I'll wrap my tinsel body with even touching turns, <clears throat> wrapping forward. And bind down the material. Then I'll come in with my scissors, trim this off. Build up a neat little head here. Now 
Now I'm just going to come in and throw a couple half hitches in. Or you can whip finish if you want here. I'll snip off the thread and trim a short tail here. Now I'll take this out of the vise and I'm going to grab the front hook, which is a size six nymph streamer hook. I'm gonna wind on the black thread, get a nice even base of thread here, something for the monofilament to bind to other than a bare hook shank. Come in and snip off that tag. And I will place the monofilament from the rear body on. And keep checking the orientation here. Make sure that rear hook's riding straight before it gets too bound onto the hook and can't be undone. Now I'm gonna come back down. All right, so now I'm gonna come in with my silver tinsel for the front hook. I'm gonna tie this on from the rear here. I'll throw in a half hitch just to secure the work and I'll start wrapping. So wrapping forward here, trying to get my silver tinsel to touch each other but not overlap. And once I get to the hook eye, I'll I'll take a few turns in front of the material and behind to secure it. And snip it off. And I'll throw a couple half itches in because I'm going to snip off the thread and come in with some smaller thread. So I've got some 70 denier UTC thread in black. I'm gonna snip off this tag end now and start with the underwing. The underwing is gonna be some white bucktail. So I'll snip off a clump of white bucktail. I'm gonna thin this out pretty dramatically I'm gonna get all the short fibers out. Now I'm gonna start hand picking all of the stray fibers till I'm left with a sparse clump here. That's about the same length. I'm gonna place this under the hook shank at the rear of the head and take a few turns forward and bring my thread back to where I started. I've got a nice thin section of bucktail here. I'm gonna snip off the waist here. Now the next material is the throat material, which is going to be some red feathers. You can use schloppen or the base of a um, rooster saddle hackle, which is what I have here. And the same process, a few turns towards the hook eye and bring the thread back. I'm going to snip that off. Trim these little guys off. So the next part is the wings. I've pre-assembled some wings. It's just a grizzly saddle hackle with some mallard flank over the top. So I'm going to tie these in one at a time. I'll do the far side first few turns, one in front of the other. 
and then bring the thread back and take a look. Looks pretty good. Now it's time for the next side. Make sure the tips line up. And the shoulders start at the same spot here at the head. And the links look good, so I'm going to tie this down. A few turns, one in front of the other, just like before. Bring the thread back and take a look at it. And that looks good. The, everything lines up. So the next step is to take these stems here, bend them back. You don't have to do this step if you don't feel comfortable. You can just snip the stems off. But bending it back just gives you added security so the feathers don't get ripped out as you're fishing them or pull on them. So a few turns over the top and then snip the stems off with one side and the other. Now I'm just going to build up a nice neat head here. Now I'll come in with my whip finish tool, throw a couple nice neat whip finishes in here, three or four turns with each finish. And come in and hit this with some head cement. I'm going to do a couple coats of Sally Hansen's here. Once that dries, I'll come in with my second coat. I actually really like this fly. And I think it's one that you guys at home can tie pretty easily, too. Um, if you've got grizzly hackle and m mallard flank, and it doesn't require any crazy materials. All right, everyone, that is the finished fly, the Bill Geegan streamer. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you enjoyed the little intro bit about Bill. Uh, if you ever get an opportunity to pick up one of his books, especially Nature I Loved, uh, definitely do not pass that one by. It's a very good read. Um, so thank you, everybody, for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Hit the sub button. I'd really, really appreciate that. Uh, like, comment, start filling those fly boxes, guys, because spring is just around the corner. Good luck out there, and I'll catch you next time.